In this season of your life, what mission are you on? My main mission now is to warn people how dangerous AI could be. As the discussion moves forward, Dr. Hinton speaks frankly about the risks posed by the rapid advancement of artificial intelligence. Viewers are about to witness his transition from relentless innovator to global cautionary voice. Listen closely as Hinton recounts his own awakening to AI's unforeseen dangers. Insights you'll want to grapple with as the field accelerates. Did you know that when you became the godfather of AI? No, not really. I was quite slow to understand some of the risks. Some of the risks were always very obvious, like people would use AI to make autonomous lethal weapons. That is, things that go around deciding by themselves who to kill. Other risks, like the idea that they would one day get smarter than us and maybe would become irrelevant, I was slow to recognize that. Other people recognized it 20 years ago. I only recognized it a few years ago that that was a real risk that was come, might be coming quite soon. How could you not have foreseen that if, if with everything you know here about cracking the ability for these computers to learn similar to how humans learn and just you know, introducing any rate of improvement? It's a very good question. How could you not have seen that? But remember neural networks 20, 30 years ago were very primitive in what they could do. They were nowhere near as good as humans at things like vision and language and speech recognition. The idea that you have to now worry about it getting smarter than people, that seems silly then. When did that change? It changed for the general population when ChatGPT came out. It changed for me when I realized that the kinds of digital intelligences we're making have something that makes them far superior to the kind of biological intelligence we have. If I want to share information with you, so I go off and I learn something, mm. and I'd like to tell you what I learned. So I produce some sentences. This is a rather simplistic model, but roughly right. Your brain is trying to figure out, how can I change the strengths of connections between neurons so I might have put that word next? And so you'll do a lot of learning when a very surprising word comes, and not much learning when, if it's a, when it's a very obvious word. If I say fish and chips, you don't do much learning when I say chips. But if I say fish and cucumber, you do a lot more learning. You wonder, why did I say cucumber? So that's roughly what's going on in your brain. I'm predicting what's coming next. That's how we think it's working. Nobody really knows for sure how the brain works. And nobody knows how it gets the information about whether you should increase the strength of a connection or decrease the strength of a connection. That's the crucial thing. But what we do know now from AI is that if you could get information about whether to increase or decrease the connection strength so as to do better at whatever task you're trying to do, then we could learn incredible things because that's what we're doing now with artificial neural nets. It's just we don't know for real brains how they get that signal about whether to increase or decrease.